We should be coming in live. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is October 7th, 2020, and we are going to look at a cigar catalog. Something that I've had with me since the 1990s, I believe. Okay, I picked this baby up uh, from Cuba when uh, in the 1990s I was traveling there a lot. Uh, well, a lot. I went there during the 1990s five times and uh, basically a cigar tourist and uh, a culture of Cuba and uh, really just the history of Cuba uh, intrigued me. So I ended up going there five times. Several de Graal, how are you doing? Welcome to a live stream. I went there in the 19th for about five times and uh, traveled around Cuba, went to the Pinal del Rio region, <laughs> Pinal del Rio region where a lot of the greatest cigars in the world, uh, the tobacco is grown and walked around the tobacco fields and whatnot and went to the different factories in different parts of Cuba. Mm -hmm. And this is something that made it back with me. Okay, and we'll take a look at it. Elder God, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. And um, there's a couple other things I have here that uh, if we get a chance, I'll show you. One of them is the little wooden menu that I showed you guys uh, in a previous uh, live stream. I thought I'd show you a close up before we dive into the, uh, into the catalog. And it's just basically a listing of all the cigars that they had under the different uh, brands. Um, trademarks that they produce cigars and they're they were produced in different factories and there's a code to them and stuff and uh and i believe some people have broken the code for the um for the naming of the cigars or the code that cuba uses uh on the boxes and, and uh, whatnot cheryl how are you doing hope you're doing well and before we get into the intro guys let me show you this i got uh got a notice last week that there was a package waiting for me danite how are you doing on charter days hey chicho live and chat hope all is well doing well all notifications sent right on Ooh -hoo, void Ooh, let's go <laughs> puff huge clouds chicho <laughs> nice check this out i got this as a fan art sent to me last week and I got a notification saying that there's something there and I want to pick it up. And uh, I opened it up because I wasn't sure what it was. So I thought I'd show it to you guys. I posted it on our Discord in the fan art page. And it was uh, sent to me from Fanalot in Australia. He sent these rooms and drawings to me. <laughs> and that's supposed to be me. Well, that is me being EA. And it's supposed to mean uh, Chicho exists for all. So I thought that was fantastic. Uh, super cool. There's three pictures. Okay. And there's one of a drinking liqueur, <laughs> which I thought was super awesome. All right. So thank you, um, the fan a lot, uh, for doing these and sending these my way. I love them. I have them in, well, he sent them to me in these things, these holders, the plastic holders. So I had these sitting on my, uh, in my space. <laughs> I'm just grinning every time I look at them, right? So super fun, super fun. Thank you very much for sending the, the artwork and doing this, by the way. Uh, it was fantastic. Okay. Super nice. My partner got a giggle and a half out of it. She was like, oh my God, super cool, super cool. And I do have, uh, a domino set I want to show you guys as well I'll probably show you guys a domino set before we look at the catalog and look at the menu um, Zurich how are you doing that's so nice super nice super nice excellent drunk Chicho is the best one on the booger sugar <laughs> strawberry rhino uh, by the way gang uh, if you want to follow my work I am on patreon patreon.com forward slash Chicho C-H-Y-C-H-O you can follow the work there. Uh, I do have my sort of thesis um, 
written out there sort of what my purpose of all this is and it's all related to mathematics and there's a little bit of mathematics in this uh, thing uh, just a little bit with gate size and sizes but I forgot to take a pic of it and uh, load it up as a as an image do you have cigars right now I'm gonna show you one cigar that's totally like basically destroyed uh, one of the cigars that I used to smoke a lot I used to have a humidor um, where I kept a lot of cigars boxes of cigars okay um, and I had some amazing cigars uh, in Vancouver at a certain period in my life I had like the best cigars in the world Hoyo de Monte and Double Coronas right they were rated 99 out of 100 okay in the 1994 I believe and I had multiple boxes of that year specifically and I had other cigars and and, and whatnot and I hooked up with uh, a couple of movie studios in Vancouver I just had a couple of connections friends working there and stuff and they knew I smoked cigars so from the US they used to and they still do produce a lot of movies and shoot a lot of TV series and stuff in Vancouver so when the Americans used to come up to Vancouver in the 1990s I had a couple of people in the movie business that used to give me a call if the director or producer or VIPs wanted to get their hands on some cigars and I would go to the either the uh, where they were editing cutting uh, the film or where they were the studios where they were shooting whatever it was that they were shooting and they would give me a table I set up a table I had a little Cuban uh, Cuban rum uh, or honey wine or whatnot and I'd lay out the cigars and they would come over and buy, buy cigars off me it was just a hobby I didn't really do it as a business I did it as a hobby because I wanted to be around cigars uh, so I've smoked a lot of cigars I don't I don't have that humidor anymore um, I sort of stopped smoking cigars in large part at some point I'm gonna get back into it right uh, once I can afford it I'm gonna get back into it because smoking cigars can be an expensive hobby especially Cuban ones you can get some amazing uh, Cuban cigars on the down low uh, really some of the they, they, they fly under the radar because they're not that expensive and people are like oh that's you know that's not a Cohiba or whatever it is you're like man if you don't know cigars then yeah you go for the name brand and by the way I worked in a specifically exclusive cigar store in Vancouver for about a year and it was an exclusively Cuban cigar store in Vancouver and during that year that I worked in that cigar store and we had a leather lounge and a lot of people coming through and whatnot we would sell ridiculous amount of cigars in a day like my best day where I was selling cigars was probably around ten thousand dollars worth of cigars I sold right like I was a lot <laughs> so uh, we had a lot of Americans that would come up and spend a lot of money on cigars and I worked in an exclusively Cuban cigar store so I smoked a lot of cigars during that period uh, because as a kickback for us for every box of cigars that we sold depending on the box we get a kickback of either one or two cigars right so just imagine each cigar box was anywhere between three four hundred to fifteen hundred dollars right with uh, Cohiba Millennials the 2000s and whatnot so we would start sampling sampling like mad it was phenomenal and I specifically got that job at that Cuban cigar store one and a half days a week because I wanted to be around cigars okay so I tend to there are times in my life if I want to do something I want to be around it a lot I go get a job in whatever it is as a part-time just to be, be be around that life right I uh, recently got back into drawing and those have inspired me to do some Chicho Van Arman. Awesome Felix, I love to see it. And our Discord Discord page, we have a, a folder for fan art now. Okay. Liam, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Sorry, long time no see. Hi Chicho, question. Do you have pictures from your earlier days? Just curious to see what you look like in your 20s. Yeah, I do. I do, I, I do have some. I look exactly the same <laughs> no I don't <laughs> uh, uh, maybe we share uh, slightly okay okay at some point at some point maybe we see strawberry cigar wrapping videos are the bomb yeah selling cigars would be a trip what the fuck that's too much money on cigars though uh, man and that would be 
uh, you know, not one customer. There, there is the one uh, I've had. The, the most I sold to one customer was around seven thousand dollars. Right? They were from the U.S. They had hookups so they could get the cigars across the border. They knew how to do it, so they came and bought a whole bunch of cigars and uh, they went back to the United States with them. Right? Ryan Polak says, "You show in chat. I'm not keen on cigars, but I've." heard that you don't inhale cigar smoke is yeah you don't inhale cigar smoke you inhale cigar smoke you die like you don't die right away but it's harsh right cigar smoking is a form of meditation if you do it properly or if you're an aficionado right if you're an aficionado you could kick back lay back on a beautiful leather couch leather chair like lounge right light up a cigar a double corona or a robusto or the, or even the small ones right a cigar will take you anywhere between the really small ones 20 minutes to an hour and a half to smoke right sometimes two hours to smoke the gigantic ones right and in that half an hour let's say to an hour and a half you can sit back and read think talk enjoy an amazing drink right you could do whatever you want and it slows you down it is a lifestyle it is amazing and I can honestly tell you at some point I'm gonna go back into it right when I can afford it there was a time in my life where I was smoking I, I knew I knew I had to stop because they can be addictive there was a time in my life where I had a lot of Hoya de Monterey double Coronas coming my way right I was the only one in Vancouver that had Hoya de Monterey double Coronas in black market right uh, even in the stores like you couldn't find Hoya de Monterey double Coronas in the stores Cuban cigar stores at the time right so I was the only one in Vancouver that I had them I was smoking three a day <laughs> okay I knew I needed to stop because one day I was driving I had a Hoya de Monterey double Corona it was my second one of the day it was about to end right well it wasn't about to end it was about halfway through it was 10 30 in the morning and I was parking parallel parking my car and I was like smoking a cigar at the same time as 10 30 in the morning and i'm like okay we need to stop i smoked that one i smoked the next one and then i smoked cigars for a few months because i wanted to get it out of my system void don't inhale the cigar uh smoke it's so rough on the so rough on the throat i love it when when a plant comes together <laughs> oh my god montreal player my first cigar was a cohiba number one um I fixed the lady's computer and she thought I was nice and her friend was a cigar dealer she had no need for them oh snap nice present nice present strawberries almost a form of meditation smoking has been around for so long in history so long in history right Felix never smoked a cigar before I'm only 17 so I don't think that's uncommon at my age haha <laughs> but I would definitely like to at some point I, I started smoking my first cigar was in my teens um, and it was Romeo Juliet um, I forget which one it was it was a Romeo Juliet uh, Corona size it was a Romeo Juliet Corona I believe and we'll go through it you'll see the sizes okay smoking on a couch I would fear burning a hole in, in the concept leather couches amazing Danite Chicho this is off topic but do you uh, but you got any tips against dizziness and nausea after exercise uh, your your sugar uh, level might be low Danite if you're running even whatever exercise you're doing gang like this is one thing I learned uh, and I learned this from uh, from doing as well as a friend that's uh, you know did bodybuilding he he, com he did competition and he was a uh, what do you call it health trainer right if you're doing any type of exercise if it's exercise that's longer than 15 20 minutes that's it is straining right eat something you need to consume preferably protein and sugar right not too much just like a couple of almonds two or three almonds and a date a couple of dates or one date right you got your carbs and you got your protein going into you right and that keeps your blood sugar it keeps you normal like i don't know the health uh all the chemical aspects of it i i 
he told me all about this i read a little bit about it but this was like 20 years ago right but it keeps you nicely balanced so donite i would say make sure you're if you're exercising heavy you're eating a little bit during the exercise right if i imagine myself smoking a big cuban cigar i would be able to behave <laughs> i would feel um i would feel like a cuban drug lord smoking one <laughs> what are cigars actually like i used to think felix says uh they're just like cigarettes or steroids but now i assume they are more they're totally different they're not cigarettes they are not cigarettes there's a lot of cigar smokers that do not smoke cigarettes okay like why would you <laughs> really <laughs> Or too much at least a small amount is good a small amount is good I guess it could be lack of blood sugar oh interesting yeah donite for sure especially if you're doing weights gang do not do weights for an hour without making sure you're taking in some carbs some sugar and some protein okay you're not building muscle at that point you're destroying muscle and you're you're not rebuilding it fast enough okay elder god i can help with that yeah elder god can help with that for sure uh, six tastes like trash void says cigarettes are pumped with poison pump with poison hey i just got here i'm actually smoking a cigar right now right on super duff what are you smoking by the way gang we're live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e for those of you that are supporting this work through patreon through twitch thank you very much for your support it is in large part because of your support that we're able to do this okay starsky chicho how's it going doing good brother doing good we did mathematics two days ago politics yesterday we're gonna chill with cigars today okay i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on hello minds vk parlor gab and twitter you can follow the work there and all the links will be in the description of this video for live streams where we don't have any visuals involved we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chycho and those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes gordito cigar that i bought off the street this summer where is that from gordito i don't know gordito is that dominican Honduran Starsky it's a shame I missed yesterday's stream I just finished watching it and it was fantastic it was a great stream strawberry rhino thank you very much for the twitch prime sub and relax and relax the whole Armenian conflict very complicated very complicated and we will be uploading this video to doop. where is it yeah. oops I gotta go back up I move myself off the stuff that I'm pressing on thank you very much for the bits uh, well Trump uh, Priester uh, and we will be uploading this video to both BitChute and YouTube we're gonna keep it nice and chill right politics on politics streams and economics as well if it comes up right and uh, if you want to support this work through BitChute and YouTube you can subscribe you can follow you can comment you can turn on notifications BitChute, you're guaranteed to get notifications YouTube I'm not too sure some people aren't getting notifications and if you are on YouTube you can support this work by joining YouTube membership uh, somewhere in here <laughs> down here somewhere there's YouTube membership there okay Gordillo is a Cuban cigar factory term for cigar measuring oh the size of it five and a half inches uh, by 50 ring so the gauge is 50 gang there's a couple of math things that you have to know in here five and a half inches along which is super uh, duff smoking it is the length of the cigar right now the gauge 50 gauge is the thickness of the cigar and the gauge is a ratio of whatever the gauge is over 64 so and and it's in inches right so it's 50 64th of an inch and in for cuban a gordito um that would be robusto uh gauge thick gauge and it's thicker the gauge as far as i'm concerned the better okay um oh my god youtube is a six state <laughs> let me take these things down uh and we'll get into 
da 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 where are we where are we there we are let's take these guys down boom 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 and we'll talk about the sizes and stuff and i'll show you one cigar that i have here that was destroyed as double corona size and uh, you'll get a feel for the different sizes right can't lie chicho starsky says i feel like rolling a blunt now i love your content man. <laughs> never gets boring keep it up brother will do starsky happy rolling by the way and uh, let me show you this before we get into the catalog this is a menu that i picked up in the 1990s where i was trekking around cuba okay we went to a restaurant and they had this menu and it's burnt on cedar and this is cuba right and it was it was what's it called rancho do Mand, mando del herald this is where it was right i'm not i can't remember which part of cuba it was we're traveling around right and uh they had amazing food and i loved this menu it was in the 1990s and i hadn't really seen a menu burnt on cedar before so i asked them if i could buy it and these are the prices in us dollars by the way that they have here okay and i asked him if i would buy it and the guy go went and checked with his manager and not buying this menu for like five dollars right at the time it was uh cuba was a very affordable place to travel like i ain't kidding you it was unbelievable so as a someone that just had graduated from university was paying off student loans working mad as a geophysicist right uh i could afford to go there and buy a lot of cigars and enjoy myself right so i thought i'd show you this it's beautiful right pollo grill pollo polo polo is chicken i believe right i don't know my spanish but polo is chicken i believe okay so it's a beautiful beautiful catalog right for sure time for sure time for a blunt off i like your style stars getting strawberry says felix one month into college now already a bit of a a bumpy ride when following your advice from the previous stream what uh, but I can't see myself there for two years maybe I'll come around to enjoying it uh, yeah give it time Felix there's gonna be years you enjoy terms you enjoy terms you don't late k9 late how are you doing hi guys i am new here welcome to our live stream dc man hey chicho the mention of the blunt made me wonder if you'd ever share your 420 equipment with us um, pa, pa, pa. or are are there so terms of service restrictions on that i don't know what the to, uh, tos is on twitch i haven't looked into it too deep i just want to share content right and i've made some stuff made some comments where people have told me okay chicho you can't say that on twitch or youtube or whatnot so i correct myself right um i don't know i the equipment that i have is a vape um and a coffee grinder <laughs> right and uh, the cannabis that we're allowed to grow in canada legally we we're allowed to grow grow four plants and i shared some pictures and you've seen some of the plants in the patio where we um where we did some live streams dude i'm gonna buy cool menus now this thing is beautiful it's beautiful strawberry it is absolutely beautiful i love this thing and it smells like like cedar right it's amazing right and it's from the 1990s and i believe i picked this up in 94 or 92 probably 92 okay it's through baking breaking bad <laughs> i learned what polo means through breaking bad right are the letters burnt everything's burnt on here like everything is burnt on here this is all burnt right and this is i believe the third menu i've ever bought in my life from a restaurant right it's just beautiful i haven't come across too many amazing menus this was the most beautiful menu i've ever come across right and like feels amazing right and these are it's like history right like this would have been crazy expensive in cuba at the time combinations combinations uh what does that say brochetta malt i tira i don't know what that is uh meris data meritira chula 
and this was a definitely a touristy place right if you wanted to eat uh, really well in Cuba you found private homes that made you amazing food and I and I did that a lot in 1990s I would just um, I mean it's and it's leather the <laughs> binding is leather right like this is leather burnt take a look no, I should do it this way no. look it's a beautiful right? Right. fantastic I wanted to show you this and you know what before we look at the menu I want to show you another thing I bought from Cuba wow they must use a template and use that to burn uh, multiple yeah they must have right I showed you guys this as well on uh, on one of my videos I believe the board game video that we shared and this was uh, like domino set that I bought in Cuba and dominoes are huge in Cuba right and this was uh, unique it was large it was heavy it was all wood and I love wood right and uh, Cubans and experts are doing so much more with so much that yeah uh, dish wizard I have like Cuba the world has a lot to learn from Cuba in recycling reusing amazing and handiwork like wow 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 and care in what they do like this is an expensive wood this is just whatever right but nicely done right it's beautiful I always wanted to try a cigar but I've never smoked a day in my life ah, oh my god now take a look elder god mentioned the dominoes and thanks for mentioning to uh, mentioning to bring this elder god right so very simple very simple right very simple oh my god the sound of this yeah and take a look at this thing these are the domino pieces and what they've done with dominoes they put usually a little these guys just put a nail right so when you put them because what you do you play a game of dominoes and then you put them on the table and you usually it's a uh, like a it's not cloth table it's um, you know either tile or wood or whatever it is so these things float on there take a look so like this right so these things can spin around and what they do I'm gonna flip this so you guys see what these are okay hopefully the sound won't be too loud right just beautiful okay and what they do when you're dealing it's like dealing cards right but for you to shuffle these you know you roll these around you put these face down when you're playing dominoes and dominoes is amazing I've played a lot of dominoes you put these face down and when you're shuffling you just go like this and it's hard to do on this because this is cloth right but on tile or wood or metal or whatever it is this moves around a lot right you know it moves very freely I'm moving the cloth here around. and then to play a game what you do is oh this one is a blank so you can see with the nail you don't want the nail facing up the nail facing down right and then when you're playing dominoes you get turns and everybody takes like I haven't played for a long time and depending how many people are playing you take you take your pieces right and you go around everybody takes one at random whichever one they want right so let's assume you take five right and then what you do is you flip these around and you're the one it's like you hold it like cars so other people don't see your pieces right oh look at this sweet a double right and what you do in general the way we used to play is the highest double uh, is the highest double puts first oh man I haven't played for a long time right I used to play in the 90s a lot right and I believe it's the it's the highest double that puts down first right so if other people let's assume you guys pull these or not the highest level maybe the highest value right so this person's got uh, five five dominoes as well right what we would do is go okay the highest value goes first 
So this is 7 and 6, so that's 13. This is 8 and 6, that's 14. We got 8 and 5, that's 8 and 5, that's 13. Uh, so 14 would go first because this is, what is this, 9 and 4, that's 13, right? So this person would put first and then you build from there, right? It's absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful, okay? The tree was honored to become Domino's. Uh, an urban gardening. I have I have one of these boxes, very small, but it's uh, a size uh, closed now. Cool. Absolutely. Chicho K. Uh, Lath. For a guy who never smoked before in his life, do you recommend that they try uh, cigarettes before they try cigars? No. Uh, I would say... If you want to smoke, if you want to try cigars, just go with cigars, but start with something light, okay? And the one of the lightest brands of Cuban, and I would tell you the truth, uh, there are other cigars from other countries, like Dominican produces really good cigars and whatnot, but there's something special with Cubans, okay? Cuban cigars are absolutely brilliant there is uh, like they don't use chemicals they use uh, at the time in the 1990s when I looked at it they were using uh, spiders to control pests one of the reasons that Cuba went full-blown organic like it was a country that really went organic before organic was even a thing right in the 1990s uh, because they had a lot of community farms a lot of community gardens because the USSR collapsed and the sugar that they were being paid to produce by the USSR to supply the Eastern Bloc countries that dried up so Cuba went through a serious economic hard time in the 1990s like really hard time right but they adapted they became anti-fragile right they uh, they started cutting some deals with companies and individuals that wanted to do business in Cuba they started uh, fine-tuning the cigar business that they had so cigars really took off in the 1990s in Cuba and one of the other things they did was basically introduce organic farming into their agriculture because they didn't have the money to buy pesticides pesticides were very expensive right so they started making community gardens all over the place controlling pests with spiders and man the food in cuba was a lot of people that went to cuba in the 1990s they would say oh the food in cuba sucks but the reason they would say that is because they used to buy all exclusives in resorts and eat all the exclusive food in the resorts and that'd be stupid thing to do right like for me i one time i went to cuba and i came back and then i went to cuba again like two weeks later right and then i went to an all-exclusive hotel i was staying in but i would never eat there you would eat there maybe once right i would just go hook up with people and get them go to their homes to cook for you um and w one time i went there i just bought the plane ticket because a friend of mine wanted to go and then we went to the all-inclusive hotel and made him a deal and paid a hundred dollars to stay at a four star all four star or five star four star i believe all-inclusive hotel for hundred dollars us right but we ate out all the time right we just wanted a place to sleep okay so these are the dominoes that i have from cuba okay and i used to play the dominoes i played the most i haven't played the the cuban one too much but the dominoes i've played the most is these one okay and these were my great grandmothers i got them from my great my grandmother all right you gotta keep the things your elders treasured so I've played this one a lot and these were like they're not uh, what do you call it bone but I believe uh, they're just uh, plastic right and my great-grandmother you guys would have loved you guys would have loved hey Chicho feline juice how are you doing Cheryl I missed my window for an AG tour fingers crossed it opens the u.s travels again ah oh, in cuba you mean 
So what kind of cigar should I try? If you're gonna, if you want a Cuban cigar, light Cuban cigar, one of the best Cuban cigars, and a cigar that I've smoked as well, and a lot of, lot of, lot of um, cigar aficionados will smoke this as well. Are the H. Opmans from Cuba? They're considered to be one of the lightest Cuban cigars, but it doesn't mean they're lacking in flavor. It doesn't mean they're not primo right we'll see the we'll see the brand here right but i would say get yourself h opman and if you want an easy draw okay you can get the smaller cigars to start off with but one of the best cigars is an h opman churchill okay i believe the the churchill name is there as well we'll check in here okay so try that lathe if you want to if you're of age of smoking of course disclaimer given a given okay since you're back on a stream uh, and replayed it three four times with my dad uh, which introduced it to me when I was very awesome awesome void awesome gang should we take a look at this now let me show you one more thing a couple of more things I brought here watch this watch this now I worked I told you I worked in a Cuban cigar store right so boxes that we sold uh, when they were becoming empty we just grab them so i you know got myself some i got myself a lot of boxes i gave a lot away previously so these are the, some of the boxes that we used to sell these are cohibas and all these stickers would be had to be on the box <laughs> when you got when you got the cigars from cuba all these stickers are not there right but it's all the disclaimer and health warnings and stuff so the cohiba boxes are some of the best uh, boxes there were right so I got myself a whole bunch of Cohiba boxes okay and they there's the Cohiba thing that they come with it so we would sell a lot of these this is uh, a Siglo 2 here's uh, Cohiba Robusto fantastic cigar fantastic cigar okay and Cohiba is on the strong side it is overpriced it is overpriced right I didn't personally buy too many uh, Siglo one too many Cubans myself because I knew the cigars and I could smoke uh, here's a Siglo four right nice boxes and I've given some these some of these boxes away as presents okay you're actually first person to say my name right nice <laughs> that's that's crazy too uh, if you know how I pronounce names Siglo three right Here's another Robusto. Okay, Robusto was a popular brand. I used to uh, not pedal, but recommend people buy the Robusta. And this is the the cigars would be wrapped in this, like this, inside the box, right? And they have a cedar little divider, right? Amazing smell. And what some people do, and we used to do this too with the cedar divider, is you don't want to light cigars with a butane lighter right wood is the best right and when you light the matches don't put it on the cigar right away because you're going to get the chemicals in there right you want it to get into the wood and cedar wood is the best but some one thing we used to do because we used to get a lot of these is break these things off right and light the cigar with these with the cedar right so with light matches or light the little chunk of this with a lighter or matches and then get that burning and then bring that up to the cigar and smoke it that way right and this is some of the things that you know they're just wrapped in they all wrap in that and they're wrapped in this and whatnot right so it's uh it was nice it was very nice working in the cuban cigar store uh smoke thousands of dollars of cigars right and then here's oh i forgot to put this in here too let's put this in here too and then here's some of the boxes some of the uh what do you call that and this is the hoyo de monterey double corona box okay so this is hoyo de monterey double corona and i got myself a lot of these from the 1990s and if you were buying cuban cigars in the 90s at the time in cuba you wanted this 
factory to be the stamp to be on there okay there was a lot of fake cigars going around so i would i bought from the streets once and learned my lesson right the hoya de monterey double coronas and whatnot went into the stores and bought them straight from there and a box of these in the 1990s hoya de monterey double corona i believe i was paying 80 dollars us okay 80 dollars us for 20 boxes of hoya de monterey double coronas each one of these in 2000 when i was working in the cuban cigar store basically right each one of these in a cuban cigar store was selling for around 40 dollars canadian right so 30 dollars us okay so a box of these i would fly to cuba one time i came back with 12 boxes of these okay 12 times 80 whatever we got and each one was selling for 40 dollars a pop right for me cuban cigars are the best okay and these are some of the uh, and romeo juliet churchill is an amazing smoke okay there's churchill tubos and churchill that come in boxes like this so the tubes are really good just for carrying cigars okay so i kept some of the tubes i used to have boxes of these right i should have probably kept everything but i didn't right and here just to give you an idea this is a hoya de monterey double corona and the wrapper has disintegrated off it anybody that's a cigar aficionado that is watching this video this is sacrilege i destroyed a hoya de monterey double corona right but it's just the way it happened <laughs> okay i love the romeo juliet a favorite romeo juliet is amazing i started off with romeo juliet and as you can tell i have a lot of romeo juliet's romeo juliet romeo juliet romeo juliet um romeo juliet here's parthagus there's parthagus there this is h opman h opman fantastic fantastic cigar okay that's the name brand that is very light the h opmans are one of the lightest cuban cigars okay yeah the binder is fine the the wrapper got destroyed the binder is fine okay and the filler is fantastic oh, and it smells still smells absolutely brilliant Oh, you don't want to double Corona uh, or the Juliet Romeo, Ju uh, Romeo, Juliet, uh, uh, Julieta was Churchill's favorite or double Corona. Just smelling this once when it lay back and smoke a cigar and we will at some point. Once I get back into it, we're going to do cigar smoking live streams. <sighs> wow. Like addictive, addictive. So I would be when i quit uh in a big way i would be smoking three of these a day right oh, yeah brilliant creamy earthy i'm not sure i'm not sure what it would be and usually in these tubes there's cedar wrapping in there as well right so the cigar still age within the tubes right because if you store there we go here's one here see this so you have the cedar wrapping inside the tubes so when you're storing these it doesn't age as well as cigars that aren't in tubes so it still does though right within reason and as far as monte cristo goes the torpedoes are absolutely brilliant for monte cristos I just stopped. Um, okay, late, late. I just stopped. Um, for me, if I find that I'm addicted to anything in life, I uh, wean myself off of that thing. Okay. And here's a. By the way, here's another one. Hoyo de Monterey. If you want an amazing smoke, which is on the lighter side, Hoyo de Monterey Epicure Number no. Ones and Epicure Number no. Twos. Amazing amazing cigars this is one of the best cigars around okay cabinet right fantastic cigars and i kept a few of these boxes i have a box somewhere with cigar boxes in it okay 
drop by my local cigar shop seeing you happy while smelling that cigar made me realize i love that shit too <laughs> void says i smoke every kind of cigar cigs vapes weeds cig cigars i love smoke smoke is good wait monte cristo monte cristo gang what i'm gonna do we're gonna flip through this right because this is going to take up the whole stage i'm going to turn off my camera but i'll keep the chat on okay because we're not reading it's not like a um comic book that we're reading so we're looking at a cigar catalog it's mainly just images okay so it's just really the size the different brands of the cigars the different houses the different labels that they had and different sizes right so i'll keep the chat on i'll keep the notifications on on this side okay and the chat will be here but i'll turn off the main camera that's on me okay smoking anything is relaxing eddie g says probably something to do with the long deep breathing pattern uh, possibly right and really your breathing slows you enjoy it man just talking about it wants me wants me to, i need to get back into smoking cigars really i've been sort of i've wanted to do this for a while i've held off because I, first of all i can't start smoking cuban cigars right now they're very very expensive and um i've been holding off getting back into cigars basically right but let's do this exactly chicho the scarface face i'm gonna turn off my camera okay and i'll turn it i'll turn this back on when we finish going through this there's a couple of things i need to read just at the beginning and at the end we'll read as well while we flip through this okay see you guys soon let's take a look at some cigars there's going to be a little bit of glare because this is all laminate laminated and whatnot and i can't gang i can't remember how much i paid for this okay i might have bought this uh the way i got my hands on this by the way i would go to the different factories and one of the factories i went to it was a high-end factory and they had an amazing uh front store storefront and they had this sitting there and i asked the person how much i could buy this for and the, they wouldn't they weren't selling it to me right so i said oh come on and i bought a whole bunch of holy de monterey double coronas and other things i'm pretty sure this is i got this from cuba right i bought a whole bunch of holy de monterey double coronas and a whole like i spent a lot of money there in cuba at the time i think i spent over a thousand dollars in cigars there right and then i think they either threw this in or what happened is i paid like twenty dollars for this thing or something okay you have to have like an hour at least to enjoy cigar at least an hour if you can't remember the price it was free if you can't remember the price it was free elder god says right and this is uh beautiful right and there was something written here but i can't make it out right and what it is i believe this contained almost all the cigars that they were producing at the time okay the labels that they were producing at the time right so each one of these and i'm going to crack this open because i'm going to lift up the pages so you can see them right and each one of these if you flip through it there's a little intro here that we'll look through but each one of these pages is basically uh what do you call it each of the different brands and if you crack this open it basically lists all the different gauges and sizes of that brand that they had at the time some of these have been discontinued okay and then there's monte cristo so we can flip through just all the brands no actually let's go through it in one at a time okay and you'll see what they have and there's some cuban cigars here which are absolutely amazing that are underrated or unknown and people just chase the name brands right so be aware once you delve into the cigar world there are some amazing cigars to be had that are not very pricey because they don't have name recognition right and as far as how many of these cigars i've sampled i've sampled every single cigar and i worked in a exclusively cuban cigar store one of the largest in canada that had a wall of cuban cigars right um, la, casa, la casa de habano 
the company was called the store in Vancouver was on Robson Street if you know where it is okay we had a lounge in the back with leather chairs and people had their own drinks so we'd be smoking cigar drinking all day while we were working and we'd be selling cigars okay and in that wall of cigars that we had I smoked every single type right so I sampled dozens upon dozens of different Cuban cigars during a year that I worked there and there's a lot of these cigars that I have smoked okay now let's flip through this there isn't very much reading to be done right it's pictures and just the types of cigars fan James Bond my cousin worked like two years in a cigar shop on the champs LC's in Paris uh, I went once uh, once in all oh, the smell all oh, the smell elder God quote I want what's coming to me the world and everything in it and that is Scarface and that's what his friend asked him we got the money you got the girl what do you want what are when they're driving in the car what a brilliant scene that is gang if you haven't seen Scarface watch Scarface right this I believe is a picture from the Pinal de Rio region in Cuba where they grow some of the finest tobacco in the world actually the finest tobacco in the world and I've been to this region and I walked through some of the tobacco fields and I've gone seeing the curing process and whatnot in the 1990s okay and when you flip the page it's got the same image and it's got a little bit of writing here so I'm gonna crack this open I'm gonna read the little intro to this okay let's flip through this and read this little intro and it's gotten in three different languages um, I believe it's Spanish French and English in the middle so if you guys can see um, that must be Spanish right that must be Spanish siglos la supremeca el la blah blah I can't read that Here's our English, what we're gonna read, okay? And here, I believe, is the French. I can read French if you want, <laughs> nice. <laughs> right? La fête de Garden durante cycles la sou. I have no idea, right? I took French all the way to grade 11, but I really didn't learn how to read or write it, right? But let's read the English version. Yeah, that's French. That's French. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. 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 Hold on. Allow. Doop. For some reason, that's French. That's French. Auto mod does not like. I wonder what that's related to. Actually, I don't. So let's just read this little intro. For centuries, Habanos have maintained their unquestionable traditional quality which is recognized all over the world right in Cuba where the best tobacco in the world is grown entire generation of master cigar makers have put their energy and skill into making a top quality product which can only be obtained by uh, using tobacco leaves grown in our soil and harvested in our climate we at habano's essay uh, don't want to take your time to prove something that everybody already knows the habanos are aromatic works of art which please any smoker no matter how demanding we prefer to give you the possibility of choosing among the more than 30 brands of Cuban cigars which uh, ar with around 700 different sizes sizes one to fit every occasion for your smoking enjoyment okay. because they are delicate products that require special treatment Habano should be kept at a uh, temperature of between 16 degrees and 18 degrees Celsius between 61 degrees Fahrenheit 61 degrees and 64 degrees Fahrenheit at a constant humidity uh, of from 65 to 70 percent to preserve their long-lasting aroma taste and come 
taste and combustibility. Only Cuban specialists who have centuries old tradition in this art can grow and roll real uh, Habanos. Any imitation, no matter how close, serves only to reaffirm their indisputable superiority. And I 100% agree with that. And Habanos, these guys here, right? The, the company that was producing these or selling these or the reseller that's in working in collaboration with the Cuban government, it's a company that I believe it's a Spanish company or French company that is in partnership with the Cuban government that they sell the Cuban cigars, okay? So that's the little intro to this catalog. Simple, straight up, right? And then it gets into the different brands. Havano, na 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 na. Did someone try to post the Matrix Reloaded French wrap? Is that what it is? <laughs> this is Cohiba. This is probably the most expensive Cuban brand that you can buy amazing cigars dark aromatic deep a pleasure to smoke there's absolutely no doubt they're some of the greatest cigars in the world uh, but they are overpriced okay relative to some of the other cuban cigars and these are the different sizes right and what you see here now i don't know what the number is here i think that's just their ordering number right but what you see here is the gate size, the 38, and 38 means 15.08 millimeters across going around this, right? And they measure it around the thickest part of the cigar. And the 152 that you see here is the length of the cigar in millimeters. In millimeters? And yeah, it must be millimeters, right? So this is 15.2 centimeters long okay chicho finally made it for a stream usually stuck at work nemo how are you doing nemo smokes you made it to a perfect stream nemo it's your namesake right so what we have here is chrono specialis and these are good smokes right esplanditos good smoke exquisitos good smoke lanceros is one of the ones that People like a lot, but I don't enjoy these as much because the draw can be very tough on these. So when a cigar is really long and on the thinner side, the draw is tougher. Like for example, take a look at this thing. The gauge on this, on the Lancero is 38, right? The gauge and 38 means 38 out of 64 inches, right? It's a ratio, it's a fraction. So 38 64th of an inch is the thickness around the cigar. And the Robusto here is 50 64th, right? And the Robusto is an amazing cigar, amazing cigar, okay? Now, out of all of these cigars, I've smoked all of these cigars before. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant smoke. And there's one other cigar that I've smoked that is not listed here is the Cohiba 2000 Millennials that were put out in 2000. And I had the pleasure of smoking one of them. And I believe they were the double Corona size. Okay, fantastic. And these are the boxes that I showed you. The So the single though, let me show you the box. Hey gang, Randall, how are you doing? How's life? What's your type of cigar, Chicho? What what uh, kind of taste are you looking for? And it really depends, Young Polax. It really depends if I'm in a heavy mood, the drink that I have. I sort of try to complement the drink that I have uh, when I was smoking, right? And I, you know, sometimes I would like a light smoke if I'm moving around. If I'm sitting down, I would smoke, in general, double Coronas or Robustos, okay? So for example, as far as size goes, this single is this guy here, right? So this would be the size of a single It would fit in here, right? Take a look, right? And it would fit fairly tightly in here. And again, 
it's got the doohickeys and the ribbons. And the cohibas came with the ribbons that they used to put in there, right? And the singalos are really good smokes, by the way. Uh, cohiba is a little bit on the heavier side as far as Cuban cigars go. Uh, but they are amazing smokes. Okay. And there, here, here are the other boxes: Singular Two and Singular Three and Singular Four. I believe I have Singular Five here. I can't remember. Right? Robustos are my favorite. Yeah, Randall, this size is brilliant. This is an hour, hour and a half smoke, depending on how fast you're going. Okay, I prefer the little ones and the and bigger ones. Yeah, the mid mid size ones are are trickier, right? I don't like the thick thin gauge ones, right? I rarely went as thin as thirty eight or thirty six, okay, unless I was going for a very quick smoke, very quick smoke. Robusto Cohiba, we got two Robusto fans. Cyberpunk, no, no comparisons. Jokes, people. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's the Cohiba, Monte Cristo, and keep in mind the Cohiba only had two pages of the different types that they had. Some of the brands have multiple pages, like they have a lot, right? Here's a Monte Cristo, and look at this absolutely beautiful like just imagine I've been in cigar fields where the leaves are as high as this person right gigantic leaves right and here's Monte Cristo right they have a couple more and I've smoked every type of this as well including the Monte Cristo a this is one of the largest cigars that uh, Cuba produces right Check out the size on this. The gauge is a 47, right? The gauge is a 47 and its length is 20, uh, 234 millimeters. So 23 and a half centimeters long, right? This baby takes a good couple hours to smoke, <laughs> okay? And the thinner ones are stronger. If I, yeah, one of the reasons the thinner ones are stronger and the smaller ones sometimes tend to be stronger is because the smoke gets to you faster so it's the heat of the smoke right like the monte cristo 2 amazing smoke i've smoked so many of these this is a brilliant smoke gang if you want a monte cristo this one is a classic it's pr probably much considered to be one of the best montes okay best monte cristos no uh -oh. i'm showing my obs as locking uh oh uh oh let's check it out i'm not sure if we're streaming anymore gang because my obs is not showing uh it moving so i'm gonna reload this let's check it out can we hear you frozen I'm just doing this we can hear you you can hear me I am Edmund you're still streaming is the video still on my OBS is not uh, my OBS is locked up so can you guys see me moving my hand who said frozen it's frozen on my side no video is frozen video is frozen okay so am I gonna have to stop streaming? Video is frozen. Okay. Oh, the price, three hundred sixty euros for the Monte Cristo two, and that's gonna be a box. So gang, I'm gonna stop streaming, and then I'm gonna what do you call it? Restart OBS. My apologies for this gang. Good thing I'm recording this at the same time. Okay. Does that sound like the right thing to do, or is this gonna kick in? Reset OBS, reset OBS. Okay, I'm gonna stop uh, streaming OBS.